I did talk to them um, earlier, and there was a possibility that I would be sharing the meeting even with her presence. So I think we should just get started, and if she joins us, then I can pass the gavel. Um, and if not, we'll be on, on the money on time. Or uh, Mayor Pro Tem, would you like me to call roll? Yes, please. Um, and just a reminder to announce your physical location when I call your name. Council Member Wilcoxon. Right here. No. Um, present from City of Ypsilanti in Washtenaw County. Mayor Pro Tem Brown. Present, um, Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County. Council Member Somerville. Present, Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County. Mayor Richardson. Councilmember Morgan. Present, City of Ypsilanti, County of Washington. Councilmember Simmons. Mr. Jones Chance. Present, City of Ypsilanti, County of Washington. With five present, there is a quorum. Move to excuse Jennifer Simmons and uh, Mayor Richardson. Support. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. They have been both excused. Clerk Alenga, I am trying to pull up my agenda here. Can you move us through, please? Council, the next item on the agenda is agenda approval. Is there, a, motion? Oh, is there a second? I'll support. Or all right. Um, all in favor of the agenda as presented? Uh, Aye. 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 All right. I believe next we would have public comment. Yes, Council. Um, just a reminder to the those in the attendees list, please raise your hand if you'd like to address Council. You'll have three minutes to do so. The first individual with their hand raised is Gary Clark. I will allow them to speak now. Mr. Clark, you have three minutes to address council. Uh, am, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes? Okay. Um, thank you. My name is Gary Clark, 309 East Cross Street. I'm referencing uh, item A on tonight's agenda. Uh, I have four points. Number one, I'd like to request that item A be removed from tonight's agenda until such time as meetings between East Side residents and our council representatives take place. I am hereby requesting that meeting. Number two, a question. Why are you crowding affordable housing next to a railroad tracks on what amounts to a wetland without proper access that is too dense and is across the tracks from a plant that uses toxic chemicals? These are the very same things that you are objecting to in your assessment of factors that amount to housing discrimination on the south side of our city. Why are you repeating that error with the Park Street development? I wanna be clear and listen up and live. We do not object to affordable housing. We are trying to prevent the city from making another mistake when all of us know better. This development is the ugly stepsister. The glass slipper does not fit no matter how many times you try it on. Number three, we are asking for a meeting with our East Side Council representatives in an effort to have a cooperative discussion and exchange about things we know and you do not and vice versa. Remember that as our representatives, you work for us. We wanted a cooperative discussion to occur between the city and East Side residents, at least 77 of whom have signed a petition opposing this development, by the way, but now by putting this item on the agenda without proper discussion and vetting, we have a fight between the city and its residents and it is not the residents doing. The prior meetings were set up by the city and people spoke who do not even live in the east side and or who were former city workers who tried and failed to do development on this site before. It was unsuitable then and it still is, nothing has changed. Once again, Take item A off tonight's agenda, at least till you do your jobs and meet with people who can help you make good decisions in this matter. This should not be a fight. 
This should be a cooperative effort to provide good services and safe, affordable, and well thought out housing for people who want to live and work in our city. What you are proposing for 220 Park Street is not that. It is what, as your own research on the South Side shows, we do not want. Thank you. Council, the next individual with their hand raised is Laura Kopp. Uh, I'll allow them to speak now. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Um, hello, uh, members of council and uh, staff. Um, I am commenting today about um, the unfortunate news that some longstanding local businesses um, in the city of Ypsilanti, like the Michigan Ladder Company and Beezies have been closing in recent months. Um, I've heard some speculation that this might be due in part to increased building inspections and the fines and required upgrades that come with those inspections. I'm hoping that maybe at this meeting or at a future meeting, uh, Joe Myers or someone else from the Economic Development Department can speak to this a little bit. Um, I do remember from a past city council meeting um, at least a year or two ago that um, Joe Myers had presented plans to council to create a master list of local businesses and change up the inspections process. So it might be time for an update on those efforts. I'd be especially interested to hear if um, the Economic Development Department is extending any deadlines or adjusting any fees in light of the strain that COVID-19 has put on local businesses, um, just to kind of either squash the speculation that's out there that this has to do with inspections or um, bring light to the department's motivations for what they're doing. Thank you. Council, the next individual with their hand raised is George Hagenauer. I'll allow them to speak now. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Basically, the paper I sent you is a summary of what I learned from talking to over 80 residents on the adjacent blocks to the proposed, prop, proposed development at 220 North Park. What I'm talking about tonight are more the concerns that I have personally. Uh, what you're voting on tonight is probably not what is going to be built, uh, if anything, at 220 North Park. Well, I've only been here a short while, a few years. This is my second pass at a development proposal. And like many of the folks, I've actually walked the property on a regular basis. There's springs and at least one ongoing spring and several that come up seasonally in the middle of the property that basically take in the water that lands on the higher blocks around 220 North Park. So it basically has live water at all times and there is a section that's marshy and that basically killed one proposal that was going to come in for the property because we know the engineer who basically did the initial work before they did the proposal. And we think in spite of the fact that the city blamed the, the, the last proposal uh, loss on us that it probably also killed that one because the same engineer basically raised the issue with them. So whatever you do tonight, I think you really need to make sure that the information developed through studies related to water, noise, and environmental issues are made public. If the developer basically backs out, then that information really should be available to the next developer. So we don't get into the same thing where we're seeing houses built on water areas or places where herbicides are sprayed. Uh, also for the people who are buying pro property down there, they really need to know what's in those studies. Uh, I was really shocked myself as they got into things really deeply this year, that if there's an environmental problem at Marsh Plating, I'm like right on the border and will not be notified if, there is a, if there's a spill or other types of thing. A number of other issues that came up. Uh, one is what is gonna be the role in the city of green space? in terms of not just water, but especially heat. And I tuned into that a lot as I thought about this, because as I was talking to people, we're dealing with record high temperatures in not just like California, but in British Columbia, Washington state. And so we really need to start thinking about that and how that plays out, not just on this property, but across the entire city. And I don't know if that's a planning or sustainability issue. 
Other people raise the issue of the fact that they're really worried about landlords having making profit off of this who have significant ongoing violations with the city. I don't know what your ethics issues are, but I think you're, if you're gonna be looking at major projects like 220 North Park and Water Street, you really need to be looking at how that is gonna be played out with people who you're already having trouble with on, on in terms of managing property. You have, that's a large carrot or an equally large stick for making things better. And finally, you're facing a real interesting problem with this. We're gonna to have to live with the development for 18 months. The fact that the neighborhood was not involved means that there's a lot of stress between us and the project, between the city and you. And if that's gonna work, because everybody's gonna to have to pass by our houses, you really need to figure out how you're gonna solve that and, and heal that rift. Thank you very much. Council, the next individual with their hand raised is Hugh Kennedy. I'll allow them to speak now. My name is Hugh Kennedy and uh, I live at 316 North Grove Street. My wife and I have been here for 37 years and uh, we are very aware of the situation that exists on that property. And uh, in the uh, cursory evaluation that I've done just in the last few days, I realized that that property is a bioswale. That property is draining a certain amount of the area above, probably as far as the first row of houses on High Street and maybe even further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, do the cal calculations because whatever water is being contained on that property right now has to continue to be contained on that property on top of whatever containment needs to be put in for whatever infrastructure is going to be included on that property, which means the detention area, not a rain garden, there is never going to be a rain garden. On, it's not, it doesn't have the capacity to handle the kind of water that we're dealing with because the water is now being controlled in a way that protects the railroad. And I further, I want to say that after listening to Gary Clark, I agree with him completely. This should not be on the agenda. You need to talk to us. We are the ones who have made the improvements in this neighborhood, and you owe it to us to look after our interests before you look after the interests of that developer or anybody else that's involved in this. Thank you. Council, the next individual with their hand raised is Jill Dietrilly. I'll allow them to speak now. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, you pronounced it pretty well, actually. Um, so I also would like to echo Gary Clark's sentiments about tabling agenda item A on 220 North Park. I live at 321 High Street directly across from the proposed development. I've lived here for 27 years and I know that property well. I walk it regularly. It's wet. It backs up to the railroad tracks. It has a chemical, a, a, an industrial plant that uses toxic chemicals directly across from it. That plant had an accident and maybe 2008, maybe it was 2003, it was sometime where I had to shelter in place in my house and I had to turn off my furnace in the middle of winter because of the emissions coming from that factory. So I'm really worried about putting any housing that close to that building and that close to those railroad tracks. So I've heard that some people misunderstood us. Uh, and the things we said at the public hearings. I don't think anybody in my neighborhood is concerned about affordable housing going onto that property. What we're concerned about is dense affordable housing or dense housing of any kind. And we're worried about putting affordable housing on a piece of land that is unsuitable for housing at all because of the water, because of the railroad tracks and because of marsh plating. It's conceivable that you could put houses on the perimeter away from the interior where the water problem is and away from the tracks and marsh plating and be fine. And I'm sure we would all welcome affordable housing completely in those locations. It's the density that's the problem given the problems with that piece of land. So again, the way I've heard our input characterized 
as is, it's as if um, we're being portrayed as if we don't want affordable housing there. That's not it. I think we would all welcome affordable housing. What we don't want is dense housing for the reasons I've articulated. The property just cannot sustain that kind of housing. And if you put it there and it fails, then there's gonna be a problem for everyone, okay? So again, I urge you to table um, the, the, the vote on 220 North Park until we've had a chance to speak with our city council representatives. A meeting has been requested and we got no reply at all. And I wanna remind you that we live in a representative democracy. And, and so we expect our city council persons to interact with us, to listen to us, to respond to us. We don't like to be ignored. Thank you. Thank you. Council, the next individual in the attendees list with their hand raised is Erica Vanya Hayes. I'll allow them to speak now. You'll have to unmute yourself. Oh, I do apologize. Good evening, City Council. My name is Erica Hayes, and I'm a realtor and a recruiter born and raised here in Ypsilanti, and I'm interested in serving on the Planning Commission. Both of my grandfathers raised their families here and had businesses here. My maternal grandfather, John Hayes, owned Hayes Upholstery and volunteered as an election inspector. My paternal grandfather, Gerald Watkins, owned Pepe's Record Store on Harriet in the 70s. Both my parents grew up on Ferris Street, one in Ainsworth Circle and the other across from the post office. I still remember the drive through through the beer cooler and I remember being so excited hearing about the new talent or the next big artist that was coming to Puffer Reds. My connection to the city is seamless. I visit my family and friends here daily and I conduct business here for at least two years now. I've had the honor to start my real estate career at the Hinton Real Estate Group, and I co-work and operate my companies out of the back office studio. I first became interested in the NA Commission um, when I saw the post about the Arts Commission a couple of years ago. Um, I went to the Senior Center and I participated in the meeting. Afterwards, I received a call from the mayor directly and I was told that based because of my residency, um, I wasn't eligible to serve on the committee. Fast forward to February of this year, um, I decided to check out the website and to see what other commissions uh, was available and how else could I possibly serve. And I came across the Planning Commission. Um, I would be honored to serve the community that I love. Ipsy is my heart, my family's here, um, my businesses are here, and my intentions are to uphold the community benefits ordinance by ensuring the following. All developers uphold their agreement to provide community benefits in return for the receipt of public support and to attract and retain projects for the benefit of the community and to support inclusion of local minority and women owned businesses. I'd like to personally thank you all for the work that you have done and the progress that I've seen in our city. And it would be an honor to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. Council, the next individual with their hand raised in the attendees list is Rod Johnson. I'll allow them to speak now. Hi, how are you? Are you, I, I, I don't know if you can hear me or not. We can yes, hear you. we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Rod Johnson. I live at 310 North Grove. I've been an Ypsilanti resident for about 37 years. Um, I spoke the last time we were on, on, the, on the 220 North Grove, uh, I'm sorry, 220 North Park uh, property. And I, I, I had mentioned the density was a big issue. Um, and 
I, I listened to the comments at the end of the meeting, and one of them was by, by uh, Councilman Morgan, who got on and said something to the effect, and maybe I, I, I'm not exactly right, but what I understood was that he felt Third Ward was um, not diverse enough or lacked diversity compared to the rest of Ypsilanti, and one way to deal with that was uh, density. So that that struck me as as okay. I th that's one way of looking at it. So that's a social economic viewpoint of that. That's fine. Uh, but then the uh, developer got on and they went in through the fact is, is that they used minimum setbacks, minimum lot size, smallest houses, and what they ended up with was as dense a property as you could possibly put on there. And when I looked at it, I my, the red flags went up because I thought, well, that's way too dense for that area. How do you get people in and out? And then you have the wet lands, you have the, the dead ends and everything else. That, that That's a huge problem. So my, my point is, is that when we look at density, it's a lot of different things. It can be profit if you're a developer, it can be a socioeconomic thing, but it, the bottom line is that it just has to work. And I think unless everybody on the council and the planning commission and all get involved is how do we make this work? This is not just a, an experiment. It's a way of life for a lot of people in homes and they have to be affordable and they have to be livable. So let's just make sure that we're on the same page. And I just wanna also support the third ward and that we like everybody in Ypsilanti, we love diversity. We love include uh, uh, being included, and we and and the fact that this is a liberal community. We're all in the same page here. So let's not bring in outside or or divisive tones into our talk. Let's just get together and we can work this out. The resolution does not actually mention any of the neighbor's comments. So I don't know what kind of resolution this is. If you start out with a resolution that does not mention any of our comments, you're not gonna end up in a spot that's gonna be favorable. So this is a major community thing and, and I would like to see us all work together. Ypsilantians can do that and we're mostly on the same page, but let's understand what each other is saying. Thank you. Thank you. Council, the next individual with their hand raised is Mary Ellen Hagenau. I'll allow them to speak now. Hi there. Um, I, first of all, I'd like to add my support to Gary Clark's request that uh, action on the resolution to uh, allow the contract with Renovari to go forward be tabled until after we have a chance to talk with Andy Somerville and Anthony Morgan. Um, and then secondly, um, others have expressed um, our neighborhood's concerns about building a dense housing development on that site. But recently the collapse of the Miami condo raised an additional concern in my mind. Um, Renovari is proposing to, to develop 220 North Park as a condominium, a no monthly fee condominium association. And I'm wondering about the long-term sustainability of a development with no maintenance fees. So we, we will not answer questions during um, audience participation, but if someone wants to respond to that after, we can, if you want to continue with your, your time. I'm, I'm done, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council, that was the last individual with their hand raised in the attendees list. Give a few moments in case someone else would like to raise their hand. Seeing none, we can, if it's okay with council, we can move on to the next section. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for their comments on this evening, and yes, we can move on. Council, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, resolution number 2021-147, resolved by the council of the city of Ypsilanti that the following items be approved. Resolution number 2021-148, approving the minutes of July 13th, 2021. Resolution number 2021-149, approving appointments to boards and commissions. Resolution number 2021-150, approving ordinance 1377, 2021 spring summer traffic control order, second reading. So moved. Support. Support. All right, Clerk Alango, can you please call the roll? 
Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Councilmember Somerville? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon? Yes. Motion carries with six yes and one absent. We can move on to our first resolution, I believe. Council, resolution number 2021-151, resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, whereas the City of Ypsilanti owns the 221 North Park property and is in the process of working with Renovare development redevelop, to redevelop the site. And whereas public engagement sessions happen on the conceptual site plan in June, 2021, and now therefore be it resolved that the Ypsilanti City Council approves development concept proposed by Renovare Development and directs staff to enter into negotiations with the developer on obtaining site control to proceed with the development. So move. There support? Support. All right, so it's been moved and supported. We can move into discussion. And I think Mr. Myers, do you have anything for us? Yeah, uh, good evening, Council. Um, I put together a short history in the um, in the packet uh, under the a request for legislation. Um, most of you were at the community input sessions. Um, just to kind of reiterate a couple of the questions that I heard from uh, the the attendees uh, at the city council meeting. Um, as far as the density goes, um, this site uh, the developers proposing it to be uh, as just as it could in a by right manner. So what the developer is proposing. Is something that does not need any sort of special land use permissions. It is it is what is allowed by right of that district. Uh, and, and actual uh, and actually, the developer could propose to double the density on this site as a special use without even having city council see it. So there's a lot of things in there where, even though the density is a concern of some people, this is what the the master plan and the zoning ordinance indicates that this is a by right. Um, and so it is allowed per our zoning ordinance. The second thing about the, the condo comment, um, there's a difference between a condominium and a site condo. A site condo is, is essentially how properties are split in Michigan based on so a law that was passed, uh, the, the Condo Act. So it's, it's essentially um, it's called a site condo, but it's essentially a platted lot of record. It's just under a different form based on how uh, the Michigan Platt Act uh, used to work and it was much more uh, labor intensive. And I don't know of any site, uh, any plat that has been done in the last 20 years in the state of Michigan. It's always site condo and that's just how land is divided. Um, I do have the developers here, um, Shannon Morgan and, and Joe Ferrari. Uh, we have been working with our uh, our state representatives on, on certain incentives, uh, but what we need from council today is for one to say we we at least approve the concept, um, and then allow us to enter into negotiations so that they can obtain site control in some form, so then we can actually proceed with the development. There will be at least five more uh, meetings with council, if not more, um, and that's not including the community benefits ordinance meetings. Um, but this is the first step. Thank you. So do we have any questions from council or should we start with um, Ms. Ferrari or Morgan? Would you like to share or say anything to council before we ask questions? Me? Thank you all for having us here. I'm so sorry. Just wanted to thank you all for having us here and we're available to answer any questions that you have. All right, Mr. Morgan, I see you are ready to ask a question. No, my, 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 I had more of a statement. Um, I, I'm really empathetic to a lot of things I heard by the citizens um, in North Park and um, through the input sessions and through email and through live and through Mr. Hagen Hour and Mr. Clark. And so I do want to acknowledge a lot of the information that was shared um, about the water crisis, about the noise, about the train tracks. And it seems like um, <clears throat> A lot of people in that area, you know, either biologists, scientists, environmentalists that have um, some idea of, of the landscape. Um, I'm not a, a developer by any stretch. And so when I hear that it's not a us against them, um, uh, I think the position that many people in many residents in, in that collective group um, is probably unified, um, regardless to what 
um, is being presented um, because I think some of them have done some research and um, come to their own conclusions. And uh, in, my, in my opinion, after hearing a lot of logical testimony, very eloquent explanations of what's wrong and, and, and very factual claims, um, I, I don't think it's a personal vendetta that density is uh, the enemy of that war. Um, but I do think uh, with a lot of new development and technologies and environmental breakthroughs and infrastructure innovations, that there has to be more to be there. Something has to be done, and uh, that's a lack. That's what we don't hear. We hear a lot of uh, streams of what, what can't be accomplished and what shouldn't happen, even though we have the physical constraints. But a lot less of um, what the potential is and how we can rework what we have now. And so those are some of the things that I'm listening for that have been widely ignored or haven't been stated. Um, because I know collectively I can understand the stance because I know the people in that group want to meet with myself and my ward mate. Um, and I'm not to say things are gonna be redundant and I'm open to their consistent stance on development. Again, they have to be a lot more forward thinking, progressive um, people in that ward that can say uh, with, regardless of no personal vendettas against diversity or density, that there's ways that we still can put affordable housing in that ward because that's necessary to make the city better. So again, I'm not a developer, I'm not a researcher or a scientist. Um, I'm, I am a representative, and I, I do hear a lot of those who are um, who have stances on on this development. So um, again, I, I will be continue to go to these meetings. And again, as far as being tabled, this is on the agenda, and I'll do my best to vote my conscience in this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Morgan. Um, Councilmember Somerville, I see you're unmuted. Yeah, something. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Joe, can you just like kind of highlight the next steps? We're gonna have, um, essentially, there will be like five more times that something will be brought to council. Um, and then before the community benefits even gets triggered or when will that start? Can you just explain that a little bit? And then I have another question after that. Yeah, so, and, and Jill and Shannon might, might be able to answer as well, but um, right now, this would be the first step, which is allowing us to enter into negotiations. If council said this development proposal is, is completely off track, uh, how dare you bring it to us? Um, we would stop this conversation. If council wants to explore this, then we go into negotiations for, for potential site control. Uh, once that happens um, and the negotiations are, are, are completed, it comes back to council for the, for the formal approval of that. Um, once that happens, then the due diligence period begins. The developer actually does a lot of the civil engineering work that needs to happen to figure out the stormwater calculations um, and, and make sure that they can actually fit the proper amount of, of units and, 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 and the infrastructure as needed. Then they come up with an incentive request um, that would come back to council. When that, come back, when that comes back to council, that would trigger the community benefits ordinance process. That takes a two month period uh, maximum um, with, with multiple public engagement meetings. Um, and then once that, that's completed, it comes back to council with, with an agreement. Uh, when that is approved, th that agreement, then we actually would go into to, to trigger the developer agreement based on that, uh, based on the CBO. Once that happens and the request for a brownfield incentive would happen, it would come back to council again um, in order to, to authorize that. And that should be the last step uh, to come back to council. Um, on top of that, the developer, and this is where I would like them to chime in, have committed to actually doing much more public outreach, um, really engaging the community as a whole um, and in this neighborhood to really kind of uh, go through the, the, the development and, and try to work through some things. And as Shannon and Jill, I don't know if you would like to speak on that. Well, first of all, we've read the community benefits ordinance and are very committed to meeting the requirements under your current program. Um, we're excited about the opportunities to work with youth. We're excited about the opportunities to hire locally. Um, there are several provisions in that program that um, we are personally committed to. And as we move forward, we'll have a plan on exactly what those activities will look like. Um, in relation to community engagement, it is really ingrained in what we do. So we will start those discussions um, as soon as we have a little bit more uh, feedback and analysis on the site itself. 
um, which we are currently working on so that we can have a more educated conversation about exactly what um, the issues are on that site and back that up with um, some feasibility reports. Great. So Joe, just to kind of like summarize everything, based on the feedback that we've received, all of the concerns that exist and have existed in past um, proposals in like step two, even before we get to the community benefits part, those will be some like answered through some of the, the preliminary work. We'll know more about two and a half because once okay. it gets like control yeah. that, that the civil engineering part happens. Yeah, I'm just trying to clarify for everybody, including myself, that we have about five to six layers of having to sign off on before this can even like be finalized. So if we reach the point, once they actually start investigating the situation on that site with the infrastructure needs, the existing water issues that are referenced, like that's already gonna be something that they are heavily working on before we even get to step three. Correct. Okay, that's all I'm just trying to lay it all out there for both myself and the rest of council and folks that are here watching. Um, I think it's important to know that what we're doing tonight is just to get to the point to where we can all answer the questions and concerns that have been raised. And then after that point, we will have several other steps that we have to agree to before we can proceed. Okay, cool. All right, thank you, Councilmember Somerville. Are there any other questions or comments from council at this time? Uh, Council Member Wilcoxon. You're mute. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so reading through the uh, the concerns of the neighborhood, um, and they're all very well intentioned and and bring up very good points, and and I think they need to be addressed, um, whether it's now or whether it's through the outreach that the developers are talking about. That that um, th there needs to be space for that. Um, you know, they brought up that uh, previously a civil engineer had had uh, done an analysis of the site. Um, in in reading through the the letter or the the paper that George Hagenauer had sent, um, it, it doesn't disclose who that was and if there was an actual formal report um, provided. Um, but they keep referencing a, a previous developer um, going through these motions and um, you know deciding that it was not developed, you know, they, they couldn't develop the site. And so, you know, I, I, I'm asking, I'd like to ask Joe to address that point and, and put that into context because it's not, it's not provided in the, in the materials that the neighborhood sent. Um, and I wasn't on council at that time. So uh, if we could revisit that, that would be great. So as far as I'm aware, there's been no civil that's been done on this site as far as investigations from, um, from any sort of a, a firm that, that has been put in writing. Um, the only thing I have is, is one guy who said he was a civil engineer said that Yucca couldn't handle the water and sewer fees in there. That was out of public meeting before. Um, as far as, as, far as the, the Norfolk home, which is the only actual development that I've seen go through on this property, or at least uh, come to fruition, uh, I, I believe that was killed due to really bad timing as they were proposed to council the meeting after the International Village came before council. Um, and so it really was, was bad timing. Um, and I don't think it was just the neighborhood, but the neighborhood was, was very against it at the time as well. Um, plus it didn't have the affordability component. And so uh, we have no documentation stating that the civil is just too much. I know that in speaking with the developer and also through my extensive knowledge of development, most issues as it pertains to water on a site can be handled through infrastructure on the site. Um, it, it is amazing what you can do with the current technologies, um, but also with some older technologies. And so because there's no infrastructure on the site whatsoever, you're going to have water pooling, uh, but infrastructure on the site really does help that. And so um, until Renovari gets into this with their civil engineer, we're not gonna know because we don't have any sort of report. Um, no one has ever shared with me the name of this engineer or shared with me any report 
And like I said, to my knowledge, there's been one developer who has proposed a development and they did not make it to the civil engineering phase. And so the, the, you know, I've ridden on the property, you know, I, I take my bike over there and ride around on it. And I've witnessed the wetness there and, and Joe and I, you, we've talked about this in terms of what the, what the actual source is. You know, when I look at that, there's, there's, um, there seems to be a sheen of, of oil on that water, the standing water and the, the water that's coming out of uh, the upper part, um, higher up the hill towards, towards the Gilbert's uh, place. Um, and I'm just wondering if the, the developers here have, have, you know, any, I don't know, I guess I'm not sure what I'm asking. You can't really say anything until you have a civil engineer go out there and look at it and see what the source of that, that water is. If it's, if it's leaking infrastructure from higher up the hill, or if it's actually a spring, it seems like if it was a spring, you'd you'd be able to locate that and and know that those are natural springs. But it it seems like a little bit confusing because the the water does not seem like um, it's just it it's a natural spring. Um, so um, I guess and the I, only word. Can... Go ahead. Sorry. I'm Sorry, did not mean to interrupt. Um, I, I just want to let you know we've had some preliminary due diligence done. Some of that, that can be from trade. I mean, obviously, if you look at the topography, the drop, and the grade of the rail, um, topography would have to have dirt come in. Uh, but we did complete, just so everyone knows, a full Alta survey in topography. We did not find um, any springs on the site from that preliminary due diligence. We probably had conversations with over a half a dozen civil engineers who provide us cost estimates. So, I, I mean, while we haven't moved through and, and it could very likely due to density, we, we, you know, as some conversation would potentially require a retention or detention that is not programmed in. Um, our initial due diligence has not uncovered any of that information at this time. Um, regarding the, um, uh, I did not recall the, the marsh plating incident. Um, certainly that, that poses a health, um, health concern for anybody that lives around there. And, and, um, I'm very cognizant of, of putting housing in a, in a dangerous place. Marsh mm -hmm. plating has a, um, you know, any plating, um, uh, facility has the, has the potential for, for hazardous uh, emissions. Um, I'm well aware of that in terms of the, the groundwater and the, um, but with the, the claim that there, there was the, uh, the leak in 2003, then, then that poses a, a significant issue to those, to these folks, um, potential, potential residents for this. Um, that gives me pause. It really gives me pause. Um, you know, the the issue with the um, with the sound. You know, it's a railroad. People live near railroads, things like that. Um, a question of whether there are there are sound buffering uh, mechanisms that can be incorporated into this. Um, you know, one obvious thing is the the walls that are put up along the uh, I ninety five corridor. You know, in, in interstate corridors. Um, it's not a particularly um, aesthetically pleasing um, model, but it, it has been employed in, in the past. Um, just wondering if uh, developers can address that at this point. Yes, um, and we have extensive backgrounds in um, redeveloping urban sites, redeveloping brownfield sites. Um, if you look at a lot of the entering suburbs, um, that with the lack of available land for new development, master plans are being redeveloped, re-envisioned uh, with uses like housing close to industrial. Um, and this is what's happening because we just don't have access to a lot of vacant land. Um, and we're see it, we see it being developed. Shannon and I have both done housing projects in, in pretty close proximity to industrial sites. Um, I think that um, you know this is something that is um, you know kind of the the new standard of urban living. Um, if we find something in the environmental due diligence that gives us 
concern under state law for that property, we will respond to it. Right now, we don't have any information that would give us concern um, at this point. Uh, we're still doing our due diligence, but um, as I said, I, you know, I personally have an extensive environmental background, so it is something that we will take very seriously. Is it possible to have, a, say, a green fencing um, of plantings to uh, ameliorate the sound? It, those are things we can look at. Obviously, it already it does increase the 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 gap that already exists, um, and we can continue to have conversations of of what sites backing to rail look like. Um, obviously, the next steps moving beyond civil is to actually get a noise assessment completed. Mm -hmm. um, generally, we don't do a barrier. Uh, and, and we can point to multiple developments in Michigan, even at market rate, that that back with the same proximity to rail, as well as, you, you know, affordable housing that's being built on the belt lines and, and transit oriented development right now that is highly successful. Um, those are things we can look at, but, you know, we can say as we continue to add to the cost barriers, um, it will increase that that gap of, of creating affordable units. And is, is Councilman Rule Cox, and just, you know, we do know the challenges with the site. We also know the challenges with Water Street. So there's gonna be challenges with every single site that we actually bring to, to development. Um, we know that if you move to Depot Town, there's, there's a train that runs right through it. It's, it's in the name of the town. Um, as far as Marsh Plating, that's a more citywide concern than it is, and it's gonna be the same concern at Water Street, as well as any development that we have. And so we, we have to make sure that there are, we're good partners with them, I actually understand the, the, the risks and also the, the needs and everything like that. But I, I understand the concerns of the neighborhood, but I also know that, uh, you know, it didn't, it hasn't stopped anyone from purchasing a home in Depot Town. Uh, knowing where the train is and where Marsh Plating is. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Councilmember Morgan, you raised your hand again. Yeah, I just want to ask a question to the developers. Um, like, according to some of the information you're hearing from the people in the surrounding neighborhoods, does it sound like with the civil engineers you work with that a lot of it is in consensus or is it like something you said you hadn't found any findings as so, so far, but does it sound in conjunction with some of the things that you're hearing or is it like some of these things you've never heard? So it's like that you've heard them that you can prepare to tackle some of them? I, I mean, these are these are concerns that are fairly standard in the sites that we're used to dealing with. Um, and, and just so everyone knows, um, and, and I'm sure your DPW can provide you guidance, but there has been a lot of changes to Michigan stormwater law, especially considering what's happened. Um, in our conversation with civil, you know, what we don't have now, and there has been had some conversation is that there may be a point that we do have to have, a, you know, retention, detention that's designed in versus a rain garden. And that really is gonna be, you know, dependent on, on the loads and capacities in the streets once we get into that final civil. The rest, as far as the, you know, the environmental, those are areas that we work in. As far as rail, I mean, you can look at places like Eaton Street Station in Birmingham that have condominiums built, you know, even closer to the rail that sell for up to a million dollars. If you can look in downtown Brighton right now that have townhomes built as close to the rail, both projects that I've worked on, um, you know, in their mixed use Main Street crossing. Um, so, I mean, we do have to get through phase two, as everyone knows, I think we, we did explain this in um, the public meetings, we do have a phase one, we did not have environmental concerns. Um, there is a higher requirement for delivering um, an environmentally clean site when we talk about residential 
requirements. Um, so those are the next steps that we really have to do, dig into, which is completing our phase two, you know, taking our soil samples, completing our noise assessments, um, and completing our civil for us to be able to provide the technical information to, to both you as council as well as the community. Uh, but these are areas that, that you know, Jill and I are fairly comfortable work with and, and fairly common in the type of projects that we work in and the type of projects that you see in, in urban infills. And right now, um, technically, if you look at best practices in affordable housing, um, providing 15 minute neighborhoods, which is what Ypsilanti is going to do, kind of meet all of these challenges as well. Hopefully that answers your question. It does. And thank you for your time. And uh, lastly, are, and you're, you're still constantly open to information firsthand from the citizens regarding this project. Of course. Thank you. Are there any additional questions or comments from council? Uh, Mr. Jones Chance. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I guess maybe I'll send these out. I'm just looking at their, um, uh, Marsh Plating's EPA reports, and I, you know, I don't see anything here. They're a biennial reporter, um, and the last time they reported, they had a report was uh, 2019, and so we should have another report this year. Um, and there's some other things that I'll share, um, I guess, later, but I, I don't see anything that would be particular to this site that is that wouldn't also affect the surrounding neighborhood. Um, and so I'm not, I don't see that as a reason not to move to the next phase, um, which is still a long way off of um, coming to an agreement with the developer and even uh, a further way off from actually having anything built. Uh, the, the water is a concern. I also pulled the floodplain data. It's not in the floodplain, but you know, if, if there's water generated underground somehow, then you know, obviously that's gonna be something we will have to address um, or, you know, the developer may opt to, to pass. Um, but I, I do agree that whatever we do find out, we should, um, we should share that information. So maybe as part of the contract negotiation, um, we can be sure that the city gets to retain any data that's generated during, during the due diligence phase so that we can share it with other developers uh, or uh, citizens. Thank you. Uh, Joe, were you about to say something? Oh, I'm okay. here to answer questions. Oh, okay, awesome. Are there any additional questions? Okay, yeah, so I just wanted to just reiterate um, to make sure I think Annie, uh, Councilmember Somerville made asked some really great questions for me that I think our audience and you know community members needed to also hear is that again, this is the first step of many um, that will also allow for a lot of these questions to be answered. And so I think that um, in knowing that, I do agree that interfacing with you know, the constituents and hearing the concerns is very valuable and very important, but it also seems like some of these questions are already um, on the radar for staff and our developers. And so um, I am I'm gonna support this because I do want to see um, the answers to these questions as well as what comes up um, uh, overall uh, from from the potential development. Um, and so if there are no more comments or questions, uh, Clerk Kalinga, you can call the roll. Council Member Somerville? Yes. Council Member Morgan? Yes. Council Member Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Council Member Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Motion carries six yes, one absent. Council moving on to the next resolution, resolution number 2021-152, resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, whereas the City of Ypsilanti adopted a special events policy and pursuant to the policy, the city may co-sponsor an event if it is in the general interest of the public and advances the city's public image. And whereas this year, the Frog Island Jazz Series will take place 
Fridays, July 2nd through September 3rd in Riverside Park. And whereas the Frog Island Jazz Series event organizer is requesting that the city be a co-sponsor of the 2021 concert series. And whereas city council agrees that becoming a co-sponsor of the 2021 Frog Island Jazz Series would be in the general interest of the public and advance the city's public image. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ypsilanti City Council approves the request to be a sponsor of the 2021 Frog Island Jazz Series in the amount of blank. So moved. Your support? I'll support. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, council Member Somerville. Yeah, I'd like to move to fill that, to fill the blank in um, with $5,000. I'd support that. All right, so that amendment has been moved and supported. Discussion? Um, I missed the first two. Sorry. <laughs> Council Member Wilcoxon, go right thank, ahead. Thank you, Mayor Burt. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, I missed the first two in this series, and uh, I, I hit the third one uh, at the Freight House, which I thought it was great that uh, that could be, you know, reconfigured to to be in the freight house and the show is great and people loved it. And, and, um, you know, when I first got the letter, you know, I talked to, to John Lawrence on, on Friday night, uh, and Brian Foley as well. Um, and I've had subsequent conversations with John Lawrence and, and, you know, it, it seems like this has been a very popular thing. I know that people from outside the city have come in for this. Um, one of my concerns is is being equitable about other other events um, as we go forward. I think the, the five thousand dollar amount is certainly um, is in line with with um, it's certainly possible and 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 doable. Um, when I first saw the letter saying, you know, look, here's this, you know, seventy thousand dollars or whatever, I was like, <gasps> I was like, you know, I I don't think that supporting it on that level is 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 in the best interest of the city, but I think giving uh, certainly support um, on this level and, and possibly more, I, I could be convinced of that, but um, um, I definitely support this. So. Thank you, Council Member Wilcoxon. Uh, Council Member Somerville. Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time with my um, MacBook and I'm trying to get the, pull up the, here it is, I have it on my computer. I want to just make sure that this would also waive the the fees. So the upfront permit fees would be forty four, almost just yeah, forty five hundred basically. Um, second. I don't know. Is there any interest in that from council? You mean 4,500 on top of the 5,000? Well, waiving the actual permit fees on top of the 5,000, because that 5,000 would essentially just go to those. So I guess I'm just asking if anyone's interested. I'll make the motion if someone's interested, but. I mean, I, I would support that. Waiving the fees? Yeah, Um, I I'll wait till, I till my turn, but um, I, I would support that. OK. So currently you're asking to waive the fees and then also contribute oh, $5,000. Yeah. The council so right now, is it, there's oh, a sorry. motion on the table for a sponsorship of $5,000. So that would have to be uh, voted upon prior to making another motion. Okay. So is there any further discussion on the current motion on the floor for $5,000? Well, I was going to say, uh, yes, the, the only discussion, which is why I guess it's going to lead to the, hopefully um, waiving some of the fees is the total amount that they were asking for, in which I was not comfortable with supporting. Um, however, I was thinking in conjunction with other cities that do the same thing, was the city a full sponsor or just a partner? And I would be comfortable with like the $10,000 partnering out of a $70,000. I think that's um, a fair contribution to what... Um, they're asking for so five thousand. Uh, that's my reasoning behind um, <clears throat> supporting the wave fee, but I support this five thousand dollar effort. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Wilcoxon. Uh, I have a question for Reagan in terms of uh, what fund this would come out of. Oh, sorry. I should actually. Can I amend? 
Can I make a friendly amendment to my motion? Sure. Okay. Um, I would like the motion to be allocating $5,000 from the cannabis revenue sharing that we received for recreational cannabis sales. I would second that. Okay. okay. It's friendly. Because both, okay, thank you. All right. So that's a friendly amendment. All right. Any further discussion on this current amendment to allocate $5,000 from the cannabis fund um, to the jazz festival? Mr. Jones Chance, I think I see your hand. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the event's been great. Um, I've only been down briefly, but um, yeah, I would, I guess I would say that maybe we should, just for the sake of putting it out there for the record that 2021 is a special year and, um, you know, maybe we can't do these things, you know, every year, but very happy to support. Thank you. Any further discussion before we call the roll on this amendment? All right, Clerk Kalinga, you can call the roll, please. On the, on the amendment, uh, Council Member Morgan. Yes. Council Member Simmons. Yes. Mr. Jones Chance. Yes. Council Member Wilcoxon. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown. Yes. Council Member Somerville. Yes. Motion carries with six yes and one absent. And uh, Council Member Somerville, did you want to proceed? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Brown. Um, I'd like to move that we waive the fees associated with the event. Support. All right, that's a moved and supported discussion on this motion. And those fees are totaling 4,500, is what you just noted? Uh, they don't. Just, they, the they don't total exceed fees are, total upfront fees are $4,497.50. Any other questions or further discussion? Councilmember Wilcoxon. Just in terms of waiving the fees, there's no, uh, I mean, that, that just goes as a loss in our ledger rather than uh, having to provide funds from any other particular um, spot, right? Just for clarification. Yeah, I assume so, but. Clark Kalanga or Reagan, can you just clarify so that we're sure that this is just, there's no loss, we're just no gain for us. Oh, I see the city manager is nodding yes. So we are, you're correct, Council Member Wilcoxon. Thank you. That is correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, Clark Kalanga, can you please call the roll? Council Member Morgan. Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Councilmember Somerville? Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one absent. So Clerk Kalenga, for clarification, with these two motions, um, I think Councilmember Somerville filled in the blank in the first one. So now we have to vote overall on everything that we just did, correct? Correct, yes, you'd have to vote on the resolution as amended. Wonderful, thank you. All right, so before we vote, uh, any other discussion before we move to voting? All right, um, oh, go ahead, Councilmember Morgan. In, in, the, in the resolution, we're still not talking about the request for the police department, correct? Is, is, is everything going to go status quo except the blank line that we put five thousand dollars on, and the amendment that we made, and everything else will be as is. Yes. yes the the resolution as amended would just simply waive the fees, the upfront fees, and then sponsor in the amount of five thousand, so a total of nine thousand four hundred ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents. And the request for the police or law enforcement is still within that contract, correct? 
Correct. Nothing would be removed from what okay. the application stated. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, I've gotten nothing but really positive feedback about the Jazz Fest so far. Folks are really excited about it and ha happy to have this happening um, down at Frog Island. And I was really pleased to see when they moved to the Freight House as well, um, like Councilmember Wilcoxon spoke about. And I hope to get down a couple more times before it's over. So um, if there are no further comments, Clerk Kalinga, please call the roll. Councilmember Simmons. Yes. Mr. Jones Chance. Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown. Yes. Councilmember Somerville. Yes. Councilmember Morgan. Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one absent. Council moving on to the next resolution, resolution number 2021-153, resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that blank be appointed as delegate and blank be appointed as alternate for the annual convention of the Michigan Municipal League to be held in Grand Rapids, Michigan, September 22nd through 24th, 2021. So moved. Your support. Support. I nominate, I nominate Councilman Wilcoxon. Support. Oh, no time. For first blank. Okay. Or oh, should it just, <laughs> one second. Okay. So Clark Olega, help us through this process because I, I also don't know if we should just go through and uh, make a motion to fill the two blanks in or should we move one at a time? Does that make a difference? Um, council can amend the resolution any way it sees fit. Um, it might be easier to do it one at a time, um, but yes, it would, the council would just need to amend this resolution to fill in those two blanks. Uh, will this be based on interest or nomination? I think it's up to us, right? I nominate Steve Cox. <laughs> he says because of his interest. It's well, like, what you could do is make a motion to fill the first blank with okay. Tom right. Wilcox in. Uh, I, I make a motion to uh, nominate. Uh, Councilman Wilcoxon for the first blank. Support. Uh, any discussion? Councilmember Wilcoxon, do you accept this nomination? Um, I, I find this interesting. I, I, I um, have have an unknown future, a bit of unknown future um, uh, so scheduling, I, but I, I can I can certainly put this in there. But um, in the past, who has gone to this, and and how is that has, has that worked out? I, I, I recall uh, Mayor Richardson has gone in the past. I think yeah. so, and I, she's not here, so I don't know what the process that she was considering for this was going to be. Do you, Dr. Lange, I see that you. This is typically how it's done each year. Um, I believe Mayor Richardson did go when this was last held in person, um, but this is council will just be amending the resolution to, at this point, uh, have Council Member Wilcoxon as the delegate. And then council would need to make another motion to uh, decide upon the alternate. I mean, I wanted to take 10 seconds just to rave on council member Wilcoxon and how uh, uh, available and accessible he is to a lot of these meetings and how he goes to more uh, commission meetings than anyone else and how his ear is always to the ground. I think he'll be an excellent delegate for municipal league. That was so kind of you, council member Morgan. <laughs> Wanted to justify my nomination, not just because he's cute. <laughs> I, I did see that wink when you said that too. Uh, is, I digress. No, I'm just okay. okay. Well, um, if there is no further discussion on this delegate nomination, uh, Claire Kalinga, can you please call the roll? Mr. Jones Chance. Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon. Uh, do I need to abstain from this? I, I will abstain. Right. Mayor Pro Tem Brown. Yes. Councilmember Somerville. Yes. Councilmember Morgan. Yes. Councilmember Simmons. No, no, I'm kidding. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With five yes, one absent, and one abstention, the motion carries. Well, thank you for your faith in my ability. Congratulations, delegate. 
Mr. Uh, Brown. I would like to make a, I would like to make another motion to uh, nominate Brian Jones Chance for the second delegate. Support. Yeah. That's um, so if you could re reword that to alternate instead of delegate. Okay, to alternate. I'd like to make a motion to uh, nominate Brian Jones Chance as the alternate delegate to uh, municipal league. Support. All right, that's a move and supported. I did see Mr. Barr come off mute for a second. He popped his head up because he heard the word abstain. I think that's what happened. Yes. That's correct. Uh, legally, you do not have to abstain on a vote like this, but you can if you wish. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Uh, any, questions? any questions? Oh, go ahead, Mr. Morgan. No, I just was saying because I believe Brian Jones Chance is the. Uh, the newest member, <laughs> and he's been very involved, and I think it give him an opportunity to put some of his knowledge and uh, interest base to work. Um, so I totally think he's capable. So I support him. Also, very kind of you, Councilmember Morgan. Full of good words tonight. Yes. <laughs> tonight. All nights, but especially tonight. Very kind tonight. Very kind. Uh, Mr. Jones, chance anything, or you want? We just move to to voting. I'm rooting for you, Steve. Clerk <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and call the roll for us, please. Councilmember Wilcoxon? Uh, yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Councilmember Somerville? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Motion carries with six yes. One absence. Well, thank you both for your willingness to represent us. <laughs> and I hope it's an enjoyable experience. Uh, we can move on to our next resolution. Council will need to vote on the resolution as amended. Oh, so sorry. My apologies. If there's no further discussion, you can go ahead and call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Councilmember Somerville? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon? Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one absent. Um, can I take a minute to close the windows in my house? There's a storm brewing out here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I saw lightning on my screen and then I looked back and realized that it's storming. Yeah. There is the weather advisory for Washington County has been posted stormy. My favorite headline so far this summer is the one that I sent you earlier, Nicole. Uh, smoky jet spring will sp like round of storms in Michigan. I haven't had a chance to read that yet, but I plan on reading it. Sorry, my niece is here with me, so if I've, I'm a little distracted because she's so cute, but wants my attention. Okay, come on, come on, say hi. Say hi. Hello. What cutie? Hello. Thank you. Oh, she's being shy. She's not shy, so I don't know what this is about. Okay. Don't put you down. All right. Everybody ready to go? <laughs> Sorry. Dear. Thank you. No problem. Okay, we can move on. Council resolution number 2021-154 resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, whereas in 2017, 15 Verity scans and seven voter assist terminals, VATs, were purchased through the Help American Vote Act HAVA grant for, from Heart Intracivic, and whereas the service maintenance agreements for years one through five were included in the original price, and whereas individual jurisdictions would be responsible for payment of the service and maintenance agreements for year six through 10, which was originally planned to be budgeted for fiscal year 22-23. And whereas Heart Intracivic has provided an option for a 10% discount if full payment is received prior to August 31st, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Ypsilanti approve the quote of $40,717.20 with Heart Intracivic for payment of the service and maintenance agreement year six through 10. Be it further resolved that the fiscal year 21-22 budget be amended by allocating $40,717.20 
to account number 101-7-2621-799-00 for payment. Good move. Or we move that. House member Wilson, I believe. And who was the support? Sorry. Morgan. Okay, thank you. We have um, council, I, I, I can answer any questions. Um, if you like, this was originally but going to be planned to be budgeted for the next fiscal year. Um, but uh, essentially it's we pay less now or more later. Are there any questions or discussion on this, uh, Mr. John Shan? Yeah, what was the uh, what was the second option? I was trying to find this earlier. The, the second option would be it'd be ten percent higher, and so it'd be just add four thousand okay. seven hundred seventeen dollars. So there wasn't like a um, there wasn't any ability to like pay over time or something like that. That's what I was. Yeah. yeah, this would this would be the only way that we could get a discount. Makes sense. Way to be preemptive. Ooh. I think my lights about to go out. Any further questions? Way. All right, well seeing none, Sir Kalengo, you can please call the roll. Council Member Somerville. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Councilmember Wilcoxon? Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one absence. Here it comes. Council, the next item on the agenda is Board and Commission's nominations. Erica Vanier Hayes is uh, being nominated as a non resident to the Planning Commission. Um, the next section following that is Board and Commission liaison reports. Um, can I ask being... you a question? Sure. Um, so I looked at the, um, you know, this is as a non resident, and, and I spoke with the chair of the Planning Commission. And his understanding was that um, unlike other commissions that it was strictly required that the person be a resident to be on the planning commission. So I wanted to ask Mr. Barr um, uh, for counsel on that. Uh, give me a minute or two. I'll look that up and get right back to you. All right, thank you. My, my power just went out, y'all. I have to stand by my door to get some light. Um, oh. Part of the conversation with the um, with the chair of that, uh, he he informed me that several previous members of the planning commission had resigned when they had moved out of the uh, out of the city to to the um, to the township. Um, and that's part of what his basis was. And if, if that wasn't necessary, then there's certainly a precedent for, for that. Um, can I, I would like to make a, can I see my notes? I guess the other point, the other point from the conversation was just a, 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 a reminder that um, that commission is currently down to, um, and uh, there may be um, a possibility that they would be down three. So the chair is very aware of the shortage and, and has asked for um, Certainly, attention to to the nominations for this. I just want to lay it out. Councilmember Morgan. Yeah, uh, I I, uh, I just have a couple points of. Uh, first, I want to thank um, 
Miss Hayes for her, her her desired service. And my, please forgive my background. Um, it's, my, my power just went out, so I'm in the kitchen looking out the window. But um, of course, like a council, I mean, McCartan just noted that just the number of mass vacancies that we have over the commissions over time, um, our, our responsibility to keep these filled. And um, I know there's currently um, a few members on different commissions that are non-residents. And according to this one specifically, the planning commission with uh, in the charter, I believe in two section, section 2111, if there's a business uh, in the city or uh, some expertise relative to the position, um, that I have to be factored in. But more important than that is the three times that she reached out that went uh, ignored, uh, which is probably when it comes to our commissions, how not inviting or uh, unattractive they seem to get people to come serve on them. Um, and not that we want to just allow anyone to serve and not vet those who, who wish to put their time and effort in, but I don't know how arbitrary it would be for this particular commission that's down three commissioners and uh, others that can't find a forum to fill, a quorum, I mean, um, so I, I don't just want to throw anybody in there, but hearing her testimony during um, public comment, it's, it's a lot of history in Ypsilanti, and I don't know at what point someone becomes not Ypsilantian, or um, or if I or people who live in Ann Arbor for 10 years and move to Ipsy for two years and get on a commission because of their so-called love for Ipsy. And so we've done that before, and not to mention in our consent agendas, we pass a lot of people through without, you know, taking an individual opportunity to vet these folks. And so... Uh, I just think we should find a way to, um, uh, again, when, we, when uh, Attorney Barr comes back with the, with the ruling of what we can do, I just think that um, a person who has uh, Ypsilanti roots for, over, uh, for decades and generations, who clearly has businesses and paying taxes and are invested into the city. Um, and I, we, I don't wanna just be um, mindless and say, regardless of where they live, but it's a lot of business owners that make a good living out of Ypsilanti people um, by having businesses here. And I think someone who wants to serve on our commissions, being extremely shorthanded and being extremely skilled, um, I would have any reservation in supporting this. Thank you. Dr. Langa, um, just for my own clarity, so is the DDA the only group that has spots for non-residents? No, there's a non-resident on sustainability commission. Um, the, the council rules that are approved at the organizational meeting uh, council approves the rules for appointment and one of the requirements is either has um, you know a business interest for two years in the city is a is a, um, a resident for two years in the city or if a non-resident then they as long as they have a special set of qualifications council can appoint a non-resident thank you so much I'm looking at the enabling legislation to see if that would be permitted for the planning commission. Although perhaps in the in the sake of time since this is a nomination and it will be voted on next meeting, perhaps uh, Mr. Barr can do some research and uh, forward for what he finds to council um, and then we can proceed with the meeting tonight. I think that would be a wonderful idea. Thank awesome. you so much for that. Thank you. So council, the next section is boarding commission liaison reports. The first being the police advisory commission. Uh, yeah, there's a, a meeting uh, July 22nd um, coming up and uh, I'll inform uh, council of the findings of that meeting. Um, there will be a presentation with the the, um, I my notes are in there in the dark, so I I'll take a stab at it, but I do know that there has been a um, document sent around by the chair for us to, uh, people within the commission and the liaison to put gesture, uh, ideas and thoughts about how to make the commission better. Um, there has been articles passed around through um, different commission members, um, again, to uh, enlighten us on some of the new practices going on. And of course, every week or every month, there are statistics and stats given by police chief Tony DeGiusti, but this 22nd is the meeting at seven o'clock and I will report back. Yeah. John, so the next uh, commission is human relations. Yes, yeah, so the next meeting will be in August and so I will be happy to report on what happens there once we meet. Thank you. Next is arts commission. 
So next meeting in August. Oh, I guess one thing to share, actually, there will eventually be a proposal um, that will go to the Arts Commission from a local artist that will, the plan is to engage with YCS students to do a series of billboards throughout what I'm going to assume will be Riverside Park. Um, I got to see a really cool book um, of a similar project that was done in other, um, other states. And basically they're like blow up screens and they're placed throughout a park. So you can like walk through and see the different um, pieces of artwork. So that should be coming soon to the Arts Commission. And then I would imagine um, it'll be a long time before it comes to council. And then we would have to obviously approve and sign off on the images, but just FYI. Uh, just with the next two parks and recreation and sustainability with council member Wilcoxons. Um, for parks and recreation commission, um, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm, I was not able to make it to the, to the last meeting. So I will uh, check in with the chair of the suite and report back at the next meeting. Uh, sustainability commission is not meeting this month and we'll meet again in August. Um, I see that Mr. Barr is there if we want to and unmuted as well. Uh. Uh, Council, I have done some initial research on the question and city uh, code section 2.111 provides uh, this. Members of boards and commissions shall be residents of the city of Ypsilanti. Residency is a condition for appointment and continuation in office. Exceptions to this section shall only be permitted if it is determined by city council to be in the best interest of the city to appoint or continue a non-resident individual in office and such appointment requires a vote of five affirmative votes of city council. So I believe that's my answer. I will continue this and if there's anything different, I'll get a memo on the city council, but that is the law as I see it ex existing at this time. So the answer is residency is required. So I have a quick question. Oh, never mind. Sure. Okay. So wait, residency is required unless there's a there's five members of council to support. So basically, a super majority. Oh. Okay. So yes. there was recently somebody who was nominated for Parks and Rec and then pulled because they were no longer a resident. So that technically could have still been up for council to decide on? Yes, it could have. Okay, so interesting. Okay, thank you. It's all based on whichever council member nominates the individual. If they wish for to sure. gotcha. nomination, they're removed. Okay, the next uh, boarding commission would be the HDC. Yes, yeah, unfortunately, their last meeting, um, we had our meeting, so I, I don't have any updates for them. Uh, planning Commission? Uh, yep, next meeting is tomorrow, and I've reported on the previous meeting uh, at our last meeting, and uh, ZBA I will not meet for another month, I don't think. Council moving on to the next section, liaison reports. Uh, first is SEMCOG, and I believe that is the, the mayor's. Um, so move on to Watts. Uh, actually, our next meeting is tomorrow, so. Uh, Urban County, which I also believe is the, the mayor's, so we can move on to the uh, DDA. The DDA is not meeting this month and they'll be meeting in August. Uh, Friends of Rutherford Pool. Uh, the last meeting was on the 7th and I reported on that. Um, just great to have this resource in, in the city. Uh, Dave Strensky is finishing up the, uh, the solar work and that should uh, be within a week or so. 
Okay, Council, the next section is Council Proposed Business. All right, thank you. Um, Councilman Morgan, I'll start with you so that you can get whatever you need to out of the way. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much. And I appreciate uh, just your timeliness and moving to meeting the uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Attorney Barr, for uh, the clarity. Um, my only council proposal business is um, getting the opportunity to meet with the residents in uh, Ward 3 about the, the development at 220 North Park. Um, I'm very excited to be able to uh, sit and listen to a lot of their concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Um, council Member Wilcoxon. Um, during uh, <laughs> the June 25th and 26th, uh, uh, flooding. Um, there's a particular resident in, in Normal Park, uh, uh, an octogenarian who, who has had issues with the uh, water buildup around her house because of uh, um, an act of uh, the Department of Public Services some 10, 10 years ago or more. And, and uh, <coughs> I've been communicating with her and with Ron Akers and she had been communicating with Ron Akers. I went out during the rain on Monday and trenched her, <laughs> her, uh, um, her alleyway to drain that away from her house. And so the, the, the problem is uh, solved for the meantime, but Ron has, has gone out, sent the foreman out to uh, check that out and they're planning to grade that. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks to Ron and the department for, for taking care of that. This has been a longstanding issue for this person. And, uh, you know, it's caused problems in the winter and caused problems certainly in the, in the rest of the year as well. So I want to thank him for that. Um, tomorrow night, there's a, uh, uh, a meeting of the public engagement uh, committee for Penn Dam removal. Um, this committee has, has taken on different lives over, the, over this past year. Uh, we now have a consultant, uh, Woods and Watts, Summer Woods, who is, uh, has been engaged with uh, myself and Christopher Jacobs and Elise Jacobson uh, in terms of um, creating collateral for, for the outreach. Um, this is a, is a small committee. Uh, it's under the uh, public, you know, open public meetings. Um, and so there will be public input on this, but tomorrow I'll be bringing all of the, uh, all the commission, the committee members up to speed on uh, what is happening with the technical issues, um, you know, and the, the work being done to do the bathymetry and the, the technical studies on the, the impact on the two bridges involved. Um, and then presenting uh, an outline of the, the restoration plan that the restoration committee is working on. Uh, there won't be anybody from that committee uh, there to present, so I'll, just, I'll do that myself. Um, but the point of this meeting is to schedule out um, the, the subsequent committee meetings and also the, the public, um, public meetings. There's a number of, uh, there's three um, focus groups that will happen. Um, and we've kind of set this up for, for you know, two week intervals starting in, in August so that by early September, um, we'll have those done. Um, subsequent to that, that there will be a, um, a report uh, compiled with the input we get from those meetings. And then a, a town hall will be um, held at the end of September or in, in early October. October 8th is the deadline for having the, um, the work uh, that Lumnotech is doing for the bathymetry and the and the engineering analysis on the bridge uh, done. That that will then uh, be put into a report that's due to the DNR in December. Um, here on River Watershed Council has already secured uh, funding from the DNR for the next phase going into 2022 to follow up on the work that's being done and um, complete. Uh, what was originally proposed. So the original proposal was um, for three hundred fifty thousand dollars, roughly three hundred fifty thousand dollars. The first phase, the first um, uh, award was a two hundred thirty or so, um, and then so the the renewal for that for the next year was just following up with the original proposal and getting the rest of that work done. So we're looking at um, you know this meeting tomorrow. We'll be we'll be planning for those dates and, and working on. Um, the content of those those meetings as well with the uh, consultant. So. Awesome, thank you. Sure. Um, 
All right, uh, Council Member Somerville, you're next on my screen. Thank you. Um, not a whole lot to add. I shared the update from the Arts Commission already. Um, I guess just to give everybody a heads up, Council Member Brown and I are going to be bringing a resolution to support um, sickle cell research efforts. Um, I know that we had that support up a few months ago to support um, Representative Peterson's bill, but the next phase of that is raising $90,000 before the license plates for that, re like the point of the license plates is to raise money for the research. So there's a threshold that they have to reach. Um, so council member Brown and I will be, Mayor Pro Tem Brown and I will be um, bringing forward a resolution to allocate $1,000 from the recreational cannabis uh, revenue sharing um, to that fund, just FYI. Thank you, Councilmember Somerville. Um, Councilmember Simmons, you're next on my screen. Yeah, just um, I think the only thing really I have is that um, I was wondering if we could get the, um, we have that like a little bit of a, like a splash page on the website for, you know, getting information about flooding damage. And I was just wondering if we could have something kind of at the top of the page for just at least, you know, a couple weeks or something, you know, with the FEMA, Reg, you know, being able to get registered, you know, for FEMA, if you had flood damage, um, just to help people be able to find it on our website as well. So is that something that's possible, Claire Kalanga? Okay, thanks. And I think, honestly, I think that's all I really have today. Well, thank you. And Mr. Jones Chan. Okay, so um, my update is uh, actually about yesterday's um, meeting with um, some of the kids from Educate Youth. Um, uh, Ms. Brown and I were able to meet with them briefly and uh, um, Mr. Morgan will probably join us uh, the next time we meet. And they were um, very excited about um, plans to get youth involved in helping to mitigate some of the violence issues that we are seeing in the city and in particular in the Heritage Park neighborhood. And they have some excellent ideas. So we are hoping to um, start sort of a youth day um, uh, or a series of them. And uh, they really went off the wall. So after we were done with that conversation, um, I asked them about uh, youth membership on our uh, boards and commissions. And it was very enlightening to hear some of the reasons. Um, some of their suggested solutions were a small stipend. So maybe 15 or 20 bucks um, per meeting um, and or a, uh, some kind of a community perk. So let's say you're a youth member on a board or commission and you get to choose a la carte from um, some perks that come along with it. Like maybe you get a season pass to the pool um, or maybe we get some businesses involved and you can get, you know, a free meal or something like that. Um, so I think we should uh, maybe consider some of their ideas and um, I'm just, I'm really excited to be working with them. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Jones Chance. Um, yeah, all I have is, is the same. It's, it was really exciting to meet with them um, and just to hear their energy, the young people's energy around, you know, what they would like to see and what things we could implement to really just um, not only strengthen their connection to the city, but also make them feel safer as well as get their, their peers and the ones who are not necessarily in these groups are coming to the clubhouse um, involved in some positive things within the community. And so I do think they gave us some really amazing ideas and things that are all feasible and really and doable. And even some of their more lofty ideas are still things that we can work with them or work within the community um, to, to get those things done. Um, and so I'm really hoping that once we kind of have a better idea of what, what and when we need um, that we can bring this to council and you all can share in our excitement around uh, what we've been working on with the young folks. Very excited. Thank you. Pardon my absence. Oh, no. You know, 
busy season for us all. They they didn't mind. <laughs> yeah, I almost didn't make it myself. So <laughs> it, it, was, it was tough, but we made it happen. We didn't want to let them down, so we definitely made it happen. Um. So I see that the mayor is on, and I know that the next section is remarks from the mayor. I don't know if she wants to speak about um, the joint work session that's listed. Or... Hello, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, please excuse my absence tonight. And um, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, for carrying on the meeting. And just briefly, that is the only thing I wanted to uh, mention was that um, if we could um, begin to set it, if we could work on setting a date for the um, a meeting with some representatives from the Washtenaw County Housing Alliance. And also there would be a couple of other um, guests that would be a part of the, would be there as presenters. So uh, I know it was very close to try to set it for the 22nd, but that was the date that some of the speakers, particularly from the Housing Alliance had given us that they were available. But if we could set a date after we return uh, August 17th um, for our first meeting then, sometime in August or September, I would appreciate, uh, I would appreciate that. Um, also, um, let's see, what was something else? Oh, uh, once again, it has, it, part of the rules of the ARP receiving that, those funds is that we have to have community input. So once I'm, get, again, I'm asking staff to begin to come up with some dates working with, <clears throat> some council members and council members can identify yourself that would like to work on, on uh, setting up those uh, community input sessions. We will need to have those as part of the, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, those are, that is just part of the regulations for us receiving the money. And I don't know, I haven't, um, we did, weren't able to meet last week. I don't know if there's been any word exactly on when we could begin to expect those funds, but uh, hopefully it's not a long time off. And um, so I think that's that's it for me for tonight right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, City Manager? Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, Council Manager. I just had a quick like question about the ARP public input. Is it possible for us to have like a working session with staff before we even take that step so we can talk about, um, so like, for example, Washtenaw County put out a survey and they already had very specific um, areas of focus. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible for us to have like either by council survey or something to have like a, a list of topics before we just kind of had like a free for all. Um, I just think it'd be more organized that way if we had some focus areas. The county had, I think like six categories and each of those six categories has subcategories. We can do that, but we just need to start moving in that direction is what I was saying tonight. Yes, we can right, do right, that. Right. Okay, cool. Um, I don't have anything tonight, but since we are talking about ARP funding, um, I'm wondering, um, I'm glad that, that you suggested Council Member Somerville that staff meet first, um, because I've been wanting to know when should we present what, um, you know, the city's needs are or losses uh, from the pandemic and then possibly give to Council um, or get a nod from council so that we know even when we have our public input sessions, we know at least how much money we're talking about. Because as they're saying, we're gonna have <clears throat> probably a lot of things that come out of it. But if we've already met with staff and we know that we're dealing with a certain amount, we can let that be known to, to the public um, how much we're receiving. I mean, how much we're, we'll have available, so. I'd like that to occur uh, first uh, if 
if council doesn't mind and and we could probably do it the way um, council member Somerville has suggested having a work session with count with staff and council. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, city manager. I just want to thank council for a very efficient and effective meeting on tonight. Um, so if there's nothing further, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, council. council I, uh, on June 15th, there were two applicants for the planning commission that are city residents. I reforwarded those um, applications to you and I reviewed the zoning uh, enabling legislation and giving, given our population. And since there are qualified electors in the city that have applied, um, um, Ms. Hayes would not be eligible per the state statute. And I did forward those applications for you to review. Thank you. I'll, I'll take a look at those. I, that had come up with the uh, with the mayor at some point, but I, I didn't recall seeing those um, in June. So I, I will look at those and um, make an appropriate nomination for the next meeting. Mr. John Chan. Yeah, I'm sorry to uh, drag this on, but if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Ms. Hayes also um, previously applied for um, Human Relations Commission, which also has vacancies. So um, perhaps we could uh, consider for that if council's up to it. So uh, the thing, I'm, just, I'm just putting that out there. I've, my memory may be wrong, but I, I, I feel like that's right. Uh, the yeah, did apply for both Human Relations and planning. I'm sorry, Coach Langer, you said she did apply for both human relations and planning. Correct. Uh, Mayor Richardson, I see your hand. Uh, yes. If um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Jones' chance of recommending her for another, but if we can, it would certainly, I believe, be best for us and for the city if we can find residents within the city to uh, be. Uh, to fill the vacancies on our um, commissions at first. And if we don't, then go out. And if the person has something um, of special value to add to the, um, to the commission. Uh, but first of all, I believe that we really should uh, do what we can to seek out residents to fill our, our commissions. Um, certainly, uh, Miss, I believe her name is Miss Hayes. She lives in the township, and um, I would certainly encourage her to seek appointment to uh, a township um, board or commission. I, I, Mayor Pro Tem, may I just follow with this one remark? Go ahead, Councilor Morgan. This is my final remark. Is um. Again, I, I, regardless of, uh, I think I, I was asking for clarity from the clerk that um, with the attorney Barr said, it's, 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 it's a, um, there doesn't have to come a vote. Like, it, it, was that an exception, a vote? I wanted to say that you're right, um, Mayor, we do need residents to be our primary focus when it comes to um, our, our, our commissions. Um, but clearly, the numbers just don't reflect that at this hour and maybe the last five years. So I think making them more appealing, making them more inclusive, and the fact that uh, Ms. Hayes did apply for the Art, the Planning, and the Human Relations Commission, and the, our failure to get back with her, um, regardless of a non-resident or not, just to give it the due diligence of vetting qualified candidates in which she does have credible, uh, consistent skills in which she applied in every one of them. I just think it was worth noting that if we really were serious about this process as a collective, um, we just got some power to... Uh, to put people there. But again, if, 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 if it fails, it fails. And um, I think um, if, like uh, Mr. Jones Chan said, an opportunity to have someone qualified on a human relations commission, I don't know if it was the planning commission itself, in my opinion, with the scene was so vanguarded, even though it was empty, um, that that was so, it was uh, so coveted. But I think all of our um, commissions equally are important and should uh, have the proper vetting um, time with, with, with qualified people. So I just want to thank Ms. Hayes personally for making those many attempts to serve our city on your own time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Morgan. Uh, 
Councilmember Wilcox then has his hand up. Um, I have a question for Clerk Holinga. Um, in a previous meeting, we had talked about, uh, you know, a different vetting um, uh, procedure for for these, and I and I thought at some point that we had we had brought up um, notifying the chairs of commissions when there were um, applicants, um, and I was just wondering if that had been um, put into practice or if. Um, if that requires a resolution to, to make that so. Uh, I'll have to, because I do, there was a resolution um, outlining the process. I'll have to review that and I will get back with you tomorrow. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barr, I see you came on camera for us. Yes, uh, just one other hook on the whole situation. I did a little further research on the planning commission and the planning commission is a state law. That's the way we get the authority. And that state law says that members should be uh, registered electors of the city. That would mean they'd have to be residents of the city. There are a couple of exceptions that I don't think apply here, but I'll do some further research and get a memo out to everyone. Thank you. Yes, Debar. All right. Mr. Jones Chance, your hand is up. I move to adjourn. Oh, is there a support? <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Have Bye. a good evening, everybody. Everyone have a good, good night. Thank, Thank you, you. Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Morgan. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Appreciate Bye, you. Bye, Chief.